Assalamualaikum everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. So this is it. I'm sure you guys have all received your results and. Um, I made a video earlier, but that was a short video. In this video, I'm going to talk about in detail about what your results mean at this point and what you should do. So regardless of the grades you've ended up with, whether they're good, bad, this video is for you and doesn't matter whether you're in your first year of O levels or in the first year of A level, second year, this video is for you. So before I start, my name is Saad. If you're new here and you're watching Math Read by Saad, this is a channel where I mainly make videos on O level by GCSE Maths and AdMaths and A level Math, but I also make videos like these. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. And by the end, if you get value out of this video, make sure to like and share this video as well. So I'll start with O levels. If you are in your first year of O levels, that means could be grade 10 or even grade nine in some cases. And let's say you've ended up with good results. So congratulations. And I hope you guys can keep it up. But at the same time, there are a couple of things to remember. First of all, the grades, the subjects that you've given are probably Python, City, Stamiyat, and Urdu. Now, please do realize that these aren't the subjects that you will be studying in the future. In the future, you'll probably be studying, uh, I'm talking about A-levels. So you'll probably be studying science, commerce, maths. So make sure that you get good grades in your main subjects as well, the subjects that you want to pursue in A-levels. And if let's say you were able to end up with good grades just by studying two, three months in the end, then don't think that you can apply the same strategy with the subjects that you're gonna appear for in grade 11 or basically the final year of O-levels. So just make sure that uh, you give the subjects that you're studying right now in the final year of O-levels a lot of time you can't compare these subjects with the subjects that you gave earlier because these subjects are obviously challenging for the subjects that you've given like Pakistan study Islamia Urdu yes I'm not saying that these grades are irrelevant you do need good grades these grades will you know put you in a state of mind where you're motivated and you feel good about yourself you put an effort you got the results so it's very important to get good grades in the first year of O levels but remember one thing that the subjects that you gave these are the kind of subjects that you know you have to retain a lot of information for a very short period of time reproduce it and you know that's enough to get a decent grade that may not be true for subjects like math physics chemistry accounting so just make sure that you don't let these grades uh, make you overconfident and you don't end up compromising or you don't end up not putting enough uh, time for the grades that you have to the subjects that you have to appear for in the final year of O levels now for those of you who haven't gotten good grades in these subjects now whatever I said also applies to you yes um, there's good news and bad news. The bad news is you may not be in the same state of mind as those who have ended up with good grades, but you know, the good news is, and again, I'm not degrading these subjects, but the good news is you don't have to study these subjects you know, later on in A-levels, these are not the grades upon the basis of which you will be given the subjects that you want to study. So, you know, there's still light at the end of the tunnel. Just make sure that you now put in a lot of effort, you know, just, just give it everything because now the subjects that you will be studying, these are the subjects, the grades in these subjects matter the most. If you get a good grade in, let's say bio, you can study bio in A-levels. That's how most colleges work. So if you get good grades in the subjects that you want to study in A-levels, you know, that's it. You're back in the driving seat and you're good to go. Now, let's talk about students who have given the exams for the final year of O-Levels. So once again, I'll start with the ones who have ended up with good grades. Once again, congratulations. Now, A-Levels is just a whole new ball game altogether. You now need to put in a lot of effort, you know, as you keep going higher and higher, the amount of effort that you have to put in to even maintain the same level of success just doubles, if not more. So just make sure that you're mentally prepared and uh, make sure that you obviously select a good college where you're getting good teachers a scholarship you know depends on whatever your priority is and uh, yeah just uh, like i said if let's say you were able to get good grades by not putting in a lot of effort this may not be true for a levels also because like i said a levels is yes there are less subjects but every subject requires a lot of effort it requires a lot of time so uh, wish you guys the best of luck now for those of you who haven't ended up with uh, good grades in the final year of o -Level. Now, first thing that you should do is you should be honest with yourself and see if these grades are reflecting your potential or they're just a reflection of the effort. 
effort. If let's say you think that you effort wise you're, you maxed out and there's not any more effort that you could have put in, but you still, you know, fell short. So it's time for you to reconsider, you know, the sooner the better. If let's say you were studying sciences and you, you fell short, you didn't get good grades, then you know, we don't really have to pursue sciences in A-levels because the going is only going to get tough. You might want to switch to commerce. Not that I'm saying hey, commerce subjects are easy and you know, you don't have to put in a lot of effort, you do. But you know, you might, once you start studying commerce, you might realize that, you know, this is your thing and science is, uh, you were just wasting a lot of time with science. Not that I personally have anything against science, but you know, just uh, that's, that's how it is. That's how I've seen students change their mind about the subjects they want to study. So if let's say that these grades are just reflecting your effort and you know, you are very persistent and you want to study science then in that case i would suggest uh, you can go for a retake but you know be very careful about retake is is okay if you're a private student if you are let's say a college student and uh, the college may not allow you to uh, pursue that subject further so just this uh, any any uh, retake decision make sure that you discuss it with your teachers with your counselors and uh, with uh, even your siblings or your seniors so just make sure that you take that decision wisely and just also make sure that you are now ready to put in a lot of effort because it's yes uh, we'll, we'll talk about how a single bad grade or how a single piece of paper is not going to decide your future but it's very important for you to be able to put in effort and see the result because this putting in the effort and seeing the result is something that you can apply to any walk of life so it's important for you to be able to see the result for yourself you know inside of academics outside of academics so just make sure that you are now mentally uh, prepared to take on even bigger challenges and you start studying from the get-go instead of you know procrastinating or putting things you know just just delaying things and uh, being a last minute person overall now for as level students if you have once again ended up with good grades congratulations you are now very close to starting university so make sure that you don't mess up in A2 because your A-level grades will obviously decide what university you go to and uh, alongside I'm sure you're preparing for SAT or you already have given your SAT. Some of you might want to improve their SAT scores. So, you know, remember what I said, the, the going's only going to get tougher. So make sure that you bring your A game in A2 also and you are ready to take on whatever challenge it is that is waiting for you. Now, AS yeah, students who haven't gotten good results well, you should definitely, I say this, it's not easy for me to say this or recommend this to students because, you know, it's, it's a lot of hard-earned money of uh, their parents. I think you should definitely opt for a retake. The reason why I'm saying that is because it's very difficult to improve your grade in A2. I've rarely seen this happen and it is possible, but remember that you are leaving yourself absolutely no margin of error in A2. And A2 is obviously going to be tougher than AS, so it practically doesn't make sense. So yeah, just uh, opt for a retake, give it in October, November, make sure that at the same time, you're not completely disconnected with what's going on in A2. You have to sort of balance, you have to balance AS along with A2. I know it's tough, but you know, that's how A-levels are, as anybody will tell you. So, and I'm sure you're also mentally at that point where you can take on this challenge. Now, for A2 students, if you've gotten good results, well, that's that's it. That's uh, the end of one journey and start of another. You guys are, I'm sure, going to start university and um, I'm sure you uh, have met the requirements of university and, uh, you know, I wish you guys best of luck. I don't really have a lot to say to you because, you know, you've checked all the boxes. Just make sure that you keep putting in the same effort that you have been putting and uh, you're ready to start university with a bang. For those of you A2 students who haven't gotten good results now, Remember, gap year is always an option. Now, I'm saying this, if uh, let's say you put in a lot of effort and you fell, you know, just a little short, okay? So you can always take some time off and improve and meet the requirement of the university. Like for example, let's say the university wanted an A and you've ended up with a B. That means you can spend the next three, four months meeting that requirement and applying again. I know uh, socially it's looked down upon that, you know, if a student is taking a gap year, that means because he or she probably got rejected from all universities. But you know, what really matters is that your vision is clear. If your vision is clear and you know, you, you know exactly why you're taking a gap year, 
here i'm sure you don't have to worry about what others will think of you because you only have to sort of wait a year for so that you can get everything together and start university as you should after a gap year. So make sure that if you're taking a gap year, you have a plan as to what you're going to do in that gap year. If you think that uh, just studying one subject is not gonna take a lot of your time and you have time after that also, then you can you know maybe learn a skill or two so just just make sure that you're productive and you have it planned already not that you will start planning after you've decided to take a gap year make sure that you have a solid plan before you tell your parents or your uh, whoever is a part of your academic journey that you, before you propose the idea that you want to take a gap year make sure that you are convinced because if you're convinced only then will you be able to convince your parents or like i said whoever has been a part of your journey so make sure that you are 100 percent clear in your head Last Lastly, I would say that if let's say doesn't matter at what stage of life you are, I said this earlier in the short video also and I'll say it again. If you're putting in the effort and you're not seeing the result, then you know it's never too late to switch to another path. If let's say you've been studying maths and you find yourself struggling to do well in maths, it's perfectly all right. I'm a math teacher. I've seen students struggle. I've seen students drop math. So it's perfectly all right for you to pursue something else, which it doesn't require a good grade in math. Same goes for sciences, same goes for any other subject, okay? So, and I said this earlier, I'll say it again, that I can guarantee, in fact, you guys can maybe a year or two or three years later, come back and tell me that I was right, that 70% of you will definitely end up pursuing something else later on in their life why because it could be because of a lot of reasons you know the past two three years have been very strange and things have been changing at a very rapid pace so whatever you've decided to pursue right now chances are two three years down the road it may not even exist so 70 percent of you will definitely end up changing their mind and it could be because you found better opportunities or you just ended up losing interest in the field that you decided to pursue and before i go just let me tell you that yes a single piece of paper can not decide your future but you know it, it depends on who's saying this if you're saying this because you've been very lazy throughout the year to put in the effort and you've just been slacking and wasting time on netflix and social media then you know this really doesn't make any sense for you to say this because you are basically shying away or not mentally prepared to put in the effort it's not that these grades will do wonders for you for some yes it might and you know for a majority of uh, students later on will realize yes Yes, these grades are important, but not as important as they once thought. But the reason why students who are not putting in the effort can say this is because if they're not putting in the effort in academics and they're not putting effort outside of it and they don't really have any achievement that they're proud of or something to show, you know, that this is where my time has gone and, you know, I've spent my time doing this, 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 maybe playing a sport at a professional level or maybe any other skill that they have acquired, then, you know, this, this statement doesn't look right coming from you. But those of you who have, um, who have, just been spending their time maybe learning a skill or two or trying to get to a level where they can play a sport at a professional level yes if you have not ended up with good grades that's fine you probably see yourself doing something else which is not entirely related to academics but at the same time please make sure that you don't completely neglect your academics make sure that you're getting decent grades throughout and you are always in a position to get to go to a good college and to go to a good university so yeah that's it i hope you guys got value out of this video if you did please make sure to like it and share it with your friends classmates whoever you think can possibly benefit from it if you haven't subscribed yet please make sure to do so and that's it fellas i'll see you guys in the next one until then take care bye bye